Today's pro bike check belongs to Connor Fearon. This is his Kona Process X, and well, look at the thing. Okay, so the heart of the frame is the Kona Process X. So I think it's running 162.5 mil rear wheel travel, something bizarre like that. Uh, it's using a faux bar style system. So essentially it's a single pivot bike. Uh, you can tell it's a single pivot because it has a link on the seat stay as opposed to the chain stay. And it has the linkage to drive the shock here. Uh, the shock is a RockShox Super Deluxe coil and it's running a four to five pound spring on there. Uh, it's an eye bag and interestingly, it's the shortest spring you can possibly get on there. It saves a bit of weight, I guess. And it's got this big spacer on the top uh, so it can actually meet the threads correctly. Uh, pretty cool setup. As you can see on the main frame, it's got full size bottles stuffed in here, an inner tube just under the top tube here, and it's got a, a short pump on my side, which you probably can't see from there. Uh, it's a super cool looking bike, carbon, just aggressive as anything. Now on the rear of these bikes, you can actually adjust them to have between 29 or 27 and a half inch wheels. Uh, you've got a chip here, so it's purpose set up as it is to run 29, but you could, for example, run it as a mullet style bike with a smaller rear wheel. Uh, although it doesn't make sense for the way that Connor rides and what he's doing on this bike. Uh, in the rear, he's also running the chainstay currently in the shorter position. So that's about 440 mil. Uh, but he does say that he does change around between settings. But to do that, he does need to change the suspension settings. Uh, a little bit more leverage, I guess, the further the rear wheel axle goes. So I uh, need to compensate with the shock setup. Uh, but this is what he's running here in Val de Fassa in Italy. Really cool looking bike. Okay, so let's move up to the cockpit. So Connor's running an alloy bar, so we don't see many of those here at EWS, tending to see most racers choosing to run carbon bars for choice of compliance. Uh, we'll ask him why, but I do suspect it's down to the way he rides because he's pretty brutish in the best possible way. He just smashes through things. Uh, so I'm guessing comfort's not that important to him. It's more about the feel of the bike. Uh, so he's running at 760 mil with, actually because of the grips and the design of him, it ends up being a touch under 780, um, the total length there. And the stem on the front here is a 50 mil deity. Um, it's a really cool sort of copper orange color. Uh, matches the Chris King headset there perfectly. It looks really smart. Now he's got a choice of spacers above and below. Not sure if it's, if it's to tune the setup on there or if it's to make it easier to access the tool. He has a one-up components tool in the uh, steerer tube, as you can see there. Don't need to take the whole thing out to show you, but a lot of the racers are choosing to have these for the convenience of having CO2 and plugs and all that stuff on the bike, easy at hand for fixing and getting back in the race. Uh, super cool stuff. So he's running Code RSC brakes by SRAM on there, extremely powerful, essentially downhill brakes. Not especially high in terms of lever angle and not especially far in, just a fairly standard setup. And under the handlebars, he's running access touch points. On the left-hand side is one that operates his dropper post there. That's 170 mil drop RockShox reverb. And on the right-hand side is for the rear access shifter there. Now, like a lot of the races, he's not running the standard touch point on there. It's actually the rocker paddle. Uh, I use the same one, but looking at the way he uses his, uh, it's flipped the other way. So it changes into an easier or a lower gear using the bottom one and a higher gear using the top one. Um, I've got it flipped, it just feels a bit more natural to me, but hey, <laughs> look at the way he races. Who am I to uh, comment on that? So front fork on the bike is a RockShox Zeb running 180 millimeters of travel. Uh, Connor has said that he just varies the travel depending on where he's riding. Uh, back home, he runs it as low as 160 uh, in favor of wanting to keep on the same bike rather than chopping and changing between different travel bikes. I think that's kind of key. I think that's really interesting. He stays on the same bikes, so he's just fully dialed in on it and just adapts a few things to where he's racing and riding. Okay, so onto the wheels and the front end here. So he's running Maxxis downhill tires on here. So it kind of says a lot about the way that he rides and he's running the nearly indestructible NVM9 rims. They're super, super stiff. Very different from the compliant rims and the savable rims, arguably, that a lot of the racers are choosing. So many racers in EWS are lo looking at using alloy rims because of the fact that when you crease them, you can bend them back and continue the stage. 
The fear is if you use a carbon rim, you smash it, you're kind of out of the race. But uh, these things, they don't really do that. They're pretty flipping strong. Now they've got a built-in rim strip on them uh, to help resist splitting the tire, basically like a, an impact puncture, also known as a, uh, I guess you could just splitting a tire or a snake bite, something like that. He's not running any inserts on the front, but he is running inserts on the rear. We're gonna to speak to him about his setup and tire pressure. Um, feel pretty firm at the moment, hard to guess. I'm sure Connor's gonna fill us in on that. And it's got a huge 220 mil front rotor, 200 mil on the rear. Uh, not seeing too many of the biggest 220s out there, but um, perfectly understandable with a bike like this, a bit like a freight train through the rough stuff. Chris King hub there, uh, just uh, winking at me. Probably the nicest hubs you can buy. Connor's a flat pedal rider and he's running a set of HT flat pedals in that lovely copper colour that matches him with his Chris King stuff on the bike. And the pins on those HT pedals sticking out around six millimetres, so a serious amount of traction there. 170 mil carbon SRAM XO cranks there with a 32 tooth chainring and a one up components, just an upper guide there. And it's got a little taco guide just on the underneath there, a bit of a bash guard. Uh, when it comes to the rear, uh, SRAM access derailleur on there and the huge 1052 sprocket there. So can climb up anything with that thing on there. Uh, it's funny because not seeing everyone running the biggest gears available by the manufacturer, but uh, Connor is in this case. Same setup on the rear, uh, running a DHR2 this time, 200 mil rotor, Chris King hub, and the same NVM9 rim. Um, lovely bike actually, really nice. Definitely looks more like a, a downhill rider's enduro bike than the, some of the enduro spec ones we've seen. One awesome piece of kit. Let's uh, find out about how it's set up with Connor himself. Okay, so we are here with Connor Fearon and his Kona Process X. Uh, super cool bike, almost, dare I say, a little bit of a downhiller's enduro bike, uh, quite fitting. So uh, firstly, how tall are you and how heavy are you? Uh, so I'm 177 centimetres or 5'10", and about 72 kilos all kitted up. Okay, and the size of the frame? Uh, so this is a medium, so it's got a 465 reach. Okay, yeah, nice. Uh, running 29 front and rear on here and with the coil shock on the back there. How do you like your sag set up on your bike? Do you like it fairly soft or firmer? Yeah, uh, to be honest, I've actually never measured like my actual sag number just sit sitting on the bike. So yeah, I couldn't tell you actually what my static sag is, but I think genuinely I run it like a bit stiffer than probably like most people just so stop it like blowing through, especially with the coil shock. You can't just add a spacer to stop it yeah. bottoming out. So run like the tune on it pretty hard and the spring probably a bit harder than like what most people would run. Yeah, sure. And uh, in terms of the ride feel, uh, do you like a slow slow feeling rebound perhaps or a load of compression? What sort of settings are you yeah, using? Yeah, it kind of depends on the track. Like if it's a steeper track, I have it a bit slower. Like I, I'm always kind of like turning the rebound like one or two clicks kind of depending where I'm riding. Um, if it's a bit flatter, then speed it up. Um, yeah, and then if it's steeper, like a bit slower to sit into the travel. And um, what about up front with the fork? So. Uh, is that one in 180, did you say? Yeah, or? so um, at home I even run down to 160 because it's pretty flat and trail riding and I'd rather set this bike up for riding like a easier traily tracks than like ride the 134 or, yeah. or the other bikes kind of make for like that kind of stuff just so I have one bike to ride and I That's cool. don't have to juggle two. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I pretty much bounce between 160, 170 and 180 um, fork travel there. Um, for the European like steep and fast tracks, we got a 180 in there, which just like jacks the front up a bit and puts me in a good position like riding down these steep tracks. Yeah, and do you have like a preferred setup on the fork with sag and volume spacers and things? Yeah, so I don't run too much. At, most of the time I just run one volume spacer. For here, I've got two, um, just cause there's a, it's kind of a balance for these tracks. Cause a lot of the time you're going really slow and there's like awkward corners and you need the fork to sit into its travel yeah, so you yeah. can like turn with weight on the front but then half the time you're going really fast on the brakes down steep stuff so kind of need it to sit in when you're going slow but also ramp up for like those fast hits. Yeah uh, and do I assume by the fact you've got quite a few spaces on the top and underneath you change your cockpit position? Uh, tracks, I actually or? don't yeah like I, I think it's 15 mil under the oh it might be 20 mil under this under the stem yeah um, and I don't ever change that just because uh, like the distance between my feet and my hands, I, I want that to stay the same. Stay the same, understandable. When yeah. you change that, like then you, you're just changing like the position your body's in. But if I'm gonna jack the front up, I'll put like put a longer travel in the fork just cause the bike kind of stays the same. It just like changes the angle of it. And what about bar width on here? So I think it's about 760 
uh, without grips on them when you put the grips yeah, on it makes it like a, a bit it? wider yeah. so it's probably like 770 or okay and you're running like that. the alloy bar on there as well yeah. um do you find have you ridden carbon bars at all uh i actually haven't no like these the daily black label um it just feels like the perfect bar for me so i haven't even wanted to like try anything different to be honest okay so a lot of the bikes we've checked this week have been running narrow bars down to like 740 and most racers are picking carbon for Basically yeah. taking out some of the vibration, I guess, making it a bit more comfortable. Yeah. Um, looking at your bike setup, it doesn't look like you run your bike biased to comfort. It's more about all out speed. Yeah, pretty much. I'm just like the first thing is like reliability. Like it doesn't matter how like light your bike is. If you get a flat tire, like you, it's going to be slow. So yeah. um, obviously like with the wheels, we've got the downhill Envy M9 um, rims and the Maxxis DH casing tires just because uh, like I like firstly I like the way the downhill um, tires feel like on the track and just having the reliability like I'm not worried about hitting rocks or roots and I know I'm not gonna break a rim or get a flat tire or whatever. Do you think you ride in a similar way on the downhill sort of stages that you would on your downhill bike or do you ride sort of a bit more reserved? Definitely more reserved like stage two where it's only three minutes long yeah. that's where you can attack like a, a downhill stage and you can kind of remember the whole thing the longer stages where you, you have a bit of an idea where you're going, you just got to like sit, sit into a good rhythm at like 60 or 70 percent. Um, so yeah, it's, it is completely different to riding like in a downhill race where you know every single rock yeah, um, on sure. the track and you're just riding like by me muscle memory pretty much. Yeah. Here you just got to read the track and flow and save your energy. Yeah, cool. Um, so back on the wheels for a minute. So you're running the Chris King hubs with the M9 Envy rims. Uh, again, another thing we're seeing here, most racers are running the alloy rims for, I guess if you crease a rim or something, you can bend it back. Yeah. Uh, I know that they are super strong, but are they like insanely stiff? Do you get a lot of feedback through those? Yeah, I think they are like pretty stiff, but it doesn't really bother me. Like I, I don't really mind like the really, I, like I set my suspension up pretty well, I reckon, and I don't need my wheels to flex or whatever. Like I just want them to be like really strong for like, yeah shredding hard I guess like it, I think more people are kind of probably a bit more picky about my setup but I just want it strong and not to flex too much and just um, be ready for everything I'm going to throw at it. Yeah cool um, so brakes you're running code RSCs on there yeah. uh, anything special going on just looks like 200 mil rotors. And... Yeah 220 on the front. 200 oh 220 on the back. wow yeah. Yeah like to, I there's really no downside of having the 220 on the front so yeah um, it's good to have that extra stopping power and First person we've seen with the 220 actually. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, uh, for me like it's an absolute no-brainer like to have 220 on the front. Okay, so HT flat pedals on there. Uh, do I assume that your flat pedals through and through? Yep, absolutely. So even when I'm like doing a cross-country race or something at home, I got flat pedals on there. Um, just I just like riding with flat pedals. It's just yeah. a different different way to do it. And every time I go to clips, I just don't enjoy it as much. Okay, so crank length then 165s or 170. I got 170 on all my like uh, in, enduro bikes and stuff like that. 165 on my downhill bike, but I don't really notice too much difference between them. I just think it's a bit easier to pedal around with the 170 cranks on. Yeah. Okay. And guessing a 32 tooth chainring. Yep, 32. So, it's so a bit it's, of staple that most are. Yeah, using. like it's, I think like a lot of the um, like being able to spin up the hill is a bit easier, saving energy like on the enduros is is what I want to do. So you could have like a bigger chain ring, but it's just going to make your life harder on the liaisons and then be more tired for the stages. So Yeah, sure. I don't think I asked about like uh, tire inserts in there. You running anything? Yeah, I got the uh, Kutch car in the back um, just for a bit of extra protection. Like you never know what you're going to hit on the stages where you don't really know where you're going. So um, it's good to have that as extra protection. But on the front, I just don't feel like I need it. So it's just on the back. Yeah, okay. And um, what about tire pressures? Have you got like a, a base pressure you use or do you fluctuate? Yeah, I got 24 on the front, 27 in the back, and that's pretty much constant wherever I'm going, like no matter the conditions. Cool stuff. Uh, thanks for showing you, uh, showing us the bike. I think it's awesome looking bike. It's nice to see Kona's out here. Yeah, yeah, I, I love it. And it's perfect for uh, all the stages here. So looking forward to round two. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. Well, there we go. That is Connor Firon's Kona Process X. Uh, I loved hearing about the fact that compliance and comfort isn't a factor for him. He just needs a bike to be strong and predictable so he can just hammer anything. I think, I think it's really, really cool. Uh, I'd love to know what you think of it. Let us know what you think in the comments underneath this video. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you love Connor's bike as much as I do. And uh, see you in the next video. See you later.